This is our place, come on in. Our place, so glad you're here. Our place, everybody's welcome. We see God on every face. Love lives here in this place. Welcome to our place, our sweet place. Welcome everyone to the Center for Spiritual Living Boulder Valley. I'm Reverend Jody Hill Stevenson and I have the absolute privilege of being the senior minister here. Um, who knew <laughs> that this destiny would call me here and you all here to me. I'm so grateful to be here. So one of my favorite authors in the whole world is Agmandino. Some of you may know him. Some of you may go, who? Uh, he wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World in the 80s. It became a phenomenal bestseller. And I had the privilege one time of being at his home and I saw on, the, on his little desk, his handwritten first page of the greatest salesman in the world. You would have thought I'd won the lottery. I was so excited to see his handwriting. And I think that he was in his day, a great sage of love. In fact, he wrote, do all things with love. And that is the theme for our February as a community. We are here to focus on love. And you know, when we're in the middle of trying to get something done, we're being creative or we're creating, or we're trying to get something done and it's clunky and, and it's just not going smoothly, we need to stop and say, if, if I were doing whatever I'm called to do right now, for God, for love, for universal love, I can let go of the struggle. And that's what we're called to do. And that's what love does. So when we do all things with love, it like, it smooths the path. This has happened so many times in my life and in people's lives that I've worked with. So as we move into our service today, we do so knowing that at the very heartbeat of our existence is the source of love. Let's take a moment and go inside. And go ahead and bring your attention to your heart chakra. For some, it may feel better to put your hands on your heart, uh, or you can just energetically go there. Science is now telling us that actually the heart has more power than the brain. That's, that's new. Well, I don't think it's new, but I think it's scientifically recently discovered. We know that it is through the heart that we experience love. It is through the heart that we forgive. It is through the heart that we welcome and we give thanks for all and everything that has happened in the past is happening now and will happen in the future. And we give thanks that we've come together to remind each other that we are each individualized sources of love in our own unique, wonderful way. We give thanks for this day. We know that whatever happens is absolutely perfect in the heartbeat of love. And so we give thanks for our time together and together we say, and so it is. So welcome to our service. Grab your tea, come on in. And uh, we have a great hour planned for you to remind you that you are an instrument of love and do all things with love. Good morning. My name is Jim Babcock. I'm your practitioner of the day. Please join me in reciting our purpose, mission, and vision. Our purpose, celebrating divinity, embracing humanity, and creating community. Our mission, 
providing tools and support to awaken our community to a spiritual magnificence. And our vision, inspiring and uplifting every one of us to transform the world. And please note the candle over my shoulder here, the bright light shining forth that represents the light within each one of us. It's how we walk this planet, shining that light, that love of God everywhere we are. Today's readings are very appropriate for the topic. Your acts of kindness are iridescent wings of divine love, which linger and continue to uplift others long after your sharing. That's from Rumi. What if our churches were places committed to nurturing creativity rather than holding so tightly to the way we have always done things? What kind of revolution could spring forth if we allowed the God we encounter in the creative spaces of our lives to shape our commitments and actions? How do you make space in your life for the delights of the creating? That's from Christine Alters Pantnia. Yeah. And finally, Every person represents an individualization of universal wholeness, the love, peace, joy, and freedom of spirit. We have a divine right to be the masters of our own fate. We have a divine right to rise above fear, impoverishment, and disease. We understand that the power of spirit expresses through every atom of our being now, this moment. That's from Ernest Holmes. So if you'd like to close your eyes, we'll do the affirmation now. I am open to possibilities beyond the limitlessness of the universe. I am open to possibilities beyond the limitlessness of the universe. Let's pray. So as we go within to that still center of our being, 
that place where God opens up the door and we walk through. We remember that that presence of the divine is everywhere present within each one of us and surrounding each one of us, letting us connect heart to heart, soul to soul. It is the essence of who we are and how we show up in the world. And I am proud to know this truth for myself and for each one of you. Today, we are here at the Center for Spiritual Living in Boulder Valley, knowing this truth for ourselves and for each other, knowing that we are each individualized expression of the divine, unique in our own way, bringing great gifts, great exuberance, and great love everywhere we are. I know that we are prosperous, we are healthy, and we are wise. Whatever shows up is God in action, and we take our cue from that moment of recognition of God and say yes as we move forward through each and every moment of our lives. I give thanks for each one of you bringing your special gift here today, for sharing it with the world and being the absolute best that is possible from each one of you. I give my heart, my soul, my consciousness to this moment knowing that that is enough for God is within each one of us the same way and we are alive with spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is. to introduce our speaker because she's pretty well known in our community. However, what you may not know about her is that she is actually a global teacher. She teaches people all over the world how to change tracks and move into a whole new level of support. She's an author, she's a teacher, she is in ministerial school, which, oh, trust me, it changes your life so much. 
And um, we know and love her as the Kelly Robbins who gives so much to this organization. I count on her so much. It's amazing how much I, I rely on her. Kelly, you are simply magnificent. And I am very, um, very proud to introduce you as our speaker for today. Thank you for the beautiful introduction, Reverend Jody. I am excited to be here today and to share with everyone a topic I have been geeking out on for many years, the original artist. Uh, and I'm going to teach and talk today about Thomas Troward. Um, it's very interesting. I was first introduced to Thomas Troward over 10 years ago at a business conference. I was at a conference with about 200 other entrepreneurs learning how to make money and do marketing and grow business. And um, the man leading the seminar, the conference, talked to us about Thomas Troward. He said his name several times. And what he was teaching us was about universal law and working with energy. And the most important thing that I picked up that stuck with me and made a really life-changing impact on me was the concept that we, you, of universal law and that it's impersonal. We, are, we all are using law, the energy of it, whether we're conscious of it or not. And it's, it's not personal, like God, is not this guy that's telling, well, you can have a red Corvette. Well, yeah, your hair's kind of crinkly. You can, you can be homeless. Um, your business, yes, you can make $10 this week. And you, well, you have a happy outlook. You can make $100,000 this week. That's not how it works. We all have the same impersonal law, this energy that we work with, that we use, whether we're conscious of it or not. And it's not personal. It's not about me. So if I am receiving certain outcomes in life, I can, it'll, the teaching allow me to take a step back and say, okay, well, if it's not me, if I'm not inherently flawed or being punished or, or meant to struggle, what am I, how am I not using this law the way I want? What do I need to do differently to get the results I want? And this is true in relationships, in um, finances, in our results in life. It's true for everything. And it was learning this teaching changed my life. It allowed me to not be emotionally up and down and it allowed me to change my results in life. And I believe that this is true for all of us having this impersonal look, if we can get out of our heads enough to take a step back and say, okay, am I, what's going on? What, we, what is this teaching? What is this law? And I'm getting this result and I want this one. What can I do differently? Because it's not about, it's not personal. It's not about me. It's not about what I did when I was five or 20 that I'm still being punished for. So that was when I was first introduced to Thomas Troward back in the business world. And I've recently had the chance to do more of a deep dive into Thomas Troward. And that's what I'm going to share with you today, my geek out. A little bit of background. Thomas Troward was born in 1847, died in 1916, and he lived in India. He was British. His parents lived in India. He was born in India at five or so. They sent him to have his schooling in England, and then he came back to India, and he was a judge. And he actually became a very highly respected judge that did a lot of high-profile cases that had big impacts on the community. Thomas Troward over the years studied all of the major Bibles of the world, the Quran, the Hindu scriptures, the Bible itself, he was Christian, the Bhagavad Gita, Raja Yoga. He studied them and became a master of them. And you can imagine being a judge in India, especially at that time, religion was very much a part of the life that they lived, that it was part of his, his work as a judge, was understanding the different cultures he worked with. And it, Thomas Troward was actually a fundamental um, teacher 
in the New Thought Movement itself. The New Thought Movement, um, Thomas Church, one of the founders of it, Centers for Spiritual Living, Religious Science is one part of this New Thought Movement. Ernest Holmes is the founder of religious science that we're here participating in. He attributes 50% of his teachings to Thomas Troward. The other big teacher for Ernest Holmes was Emerson. Emerson brought more poetry and artistic flair to his teaching. Thomas Troward, he's known as being difficult to study because he was a judge. He's very methodical. He, he presents a thought and then like a judge, he goes detail, 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 detail. Detail. He's very structured. And Ernest Holmes loved that about him. He had been studying a lot of metaphysical teachers and he liked Thomas Troward because he was so methodical and explained himself very articulately. So Thomas Troward retired, moved back to England with his wife at the time and was sitting having tea and talk, must have been talking to the people around him. And a woman um, heard him and started engaging with him and realized that he was a gifted and very articulate teacher and invited him to come do some lectures, which became famous. They're known as the Edinburgh Lectures and the Door Lectures. Thomas Troward, those lectures have been transcribed into books that are you can that are available on Amazon. Ernest Holmes' first talks were on the Eidenberg and Door lectures. So we're not going to dig into those lectures today. But I am going to share with you some of the main concepts and takeaways that I have from Ernest Holmes' teachings that I'd like to share with you. Particularly this concept of the original artist which came from the door lectures. Ernest Holmes teaches about the spirit of true living. What does that mean to um, live our lives each day with the spirit of true living? It means living our fullest potential fully and creatively like artists do. And uh, you know, I don't know about you, but when I hear an artist, my I have a vision in my head of someone with paint colors all over and perhaps they're messy and freewheeling and um, do what they want, live their life with how they want. Um, and that, it's just this image that pops up. And I, I invite you, what comes up for you when you think of an artist? What makes an artist? And here we are talking about our lives, living our lives as the original artist. So first of all, to be an artist, we make art, correct? <laughs> that's, that's the definition of it. I am a writer is my art. Uh, I might be here speaking is an art. Um, Thomas Troward is suggesting that our lives are our art. Each day, each moment of our life, we are in that creation mode. Isn't that beautiful? Our lives are our art. The other thing about artists and what makes each of them unique is they each have a different style, right? Uh, every artist has a different style and a different medium. So for example, my medium may be here speaking to you. It may be writing, writing an article or a book or something. It may be painting like that original vision that I received. It could be as a chef cooking or as a friend, as a coworker, as a, a family member, someone in relationship. All of these are different mediums that we have and we each have our own unique perspective. Like the original artists, we are the original ones experiencing this, right, this life right now in this very moment. So as an example, I may ask everyone here watching or listening to the talk to write a write a description of an artist or write a description of an original artist what does that mean to you each of us would have something different no one would have exactly the same words in the exact same order there are tv shows with the chefs like they they come in and there's a table filled with these ingredients and they have to come up with whatever recipe they have they're always different 
So that's how we approach our lives. When I was talking earlier about the impersonal law and how I learned that at that um, conference and how the law doesn't dis discriminate between people, that may be true. And we each are coming at this life from a totally different space. We've had different childhood. We've had different beliefs and judgments and experiences that make us all unique. So we each approach this universal law, this energy, this creative force from a different angle, from a different perspective. And it's up to us to kind of play around and figure out what is that for me? We're all, we're all in this different space and have this unique perspective. And on one hand, I could say we all have different tools to create from because our lives have been so different. What might be more accurate is we're all standing in a different spot on the map. We're all standing in a different spot with different backgrounds, but we all have the same tools to work with, to create from. And Thomas Troward calls these the properties of spirit. And I am going to pull up a PowerPoint slide to share with everyone. And I have some quotes also from him that I'm going to share that it's e sometimes easier to read. <laughs> These are the seven properties of spirit that Troward teaches. Life, love, light or wisdom, joy, peace, power, and beauty. And I, some people add more onto here. This specifically are the seven that Thomas Trower teaches. Now, what are these properties of spirit or qualities of God is what I often call them. I think these are super important and I try to integrate them. I, I think a class on each of them would be perfect. I try to integrate them into everything I teach because these are the energies of God is what he is saying. These are the energies that we create from. They're the properties that make up the divine. And Troward calls these, he calls them original feelings. We have the original artist. He calls these original feelings. And I don't know that feelings are in today's modern age, a word we would use. We might call them vibrations. And while we have it up, um, what I suggest and invite you to do is to play with each of these words. You could spend a week or more on each word. What does it mean to feel, to vibrate at power, to experience each day from this property of power or love or peace or beauty? Trower describes the original artist and original feelings as love demonstrating as beauty love demonstrating as beauty. And I'm going to go on to the next slide because this is super powerful and it might help some of you to read it with me as I talk. We're gonna delve into what is beauty? What does this mean? Let's take a deep dive into it. Beauty represents the most supreme living quality of thought. It is the glorious overflowing of fullness of love, which indicates the presence of infinite reserves of power behind it. It is the joyous profusion that shows the possession of inexhaustible stores of wealth, which can afford to be thus lavish and yet remain as exhaustless as before. Read aright, Beauty is the index to the whole nature of being. Beauty is the index to the whole nature of being. Super powerful. Super powerful. So as we live and create, we are love demonstrating as beauty. This is what Troward is teaching. And I don't know about you, but I hadn't thought much about beauty before. And the interesting thing, when I was at that conference all those years ago, they had a handout on Thomas Troward has written an essay on beauty. And I've read it many times. It's, as you could see from that paragraph, not super easy to 
um, absorb, but the teaching behind it is just so powerful. So Trower goes on to explain that beauty is the externalization of harmony. Harmony. Beauty is the externalization of harmony. And harmony is all seven of these properties of spirit, these qualities of God working together as one. I'm going to say that again. Harmony is all of these properties of spirit working together as one. So I, I invite you to examine the validity of playing around with feeling and vibrating and the meaning of each of those properties of spirit individually so that you master them really and are using and embodying each and every one of them all the time as we create our art, as we live our lives each day. What does that feel like? What does that look like? Because when he's telling us this, he's really giving us the keys to the whole nature of being. Think about that. And what does it look and feel like to live each, our, each day, our life in this way as an original artist? So one of the final teachings I wanna share is Thomas Troward talks about us being a distributor of this universal energy and not a generator of the energy. A distributor of the energy and not a generator of the energy. He, he shares that it's our responsibility to be open to the divine flow of life, open at the top. <clears throat> so this is a big one. I know my first at least 40 years, if not more of life, I generated the energy. Um, it came from me. It is a different experience knowing that you can allow it to flow through you. It's less draining, right? It requires less of me. It requires a different um, focal point rather than, oh, I need to do this and this, this. It's being open to the flow of creation as an artist has. So I have one more slide I'm going to show you. Let me get it up. This is the last slide. Troward shares that we are complete in ourselves. And the reason why we fail to realize this is that we do not understand how far the self of our self extends. We are complete in ourselves. And the reason why we fail to realize this is that we do not understand how far the self of our self extends. Let's think about that how far the self of our self extends. What does that mean, right? Intellectually, we understand that the whole of everything is all the parts, like we can picture a whole pie and all the pieces of the pie. Intellectually, I think all of us get that. What Troward is saying that we don't know this about ourselves. We don't recognize that the whole of us is all of God, all of spirits, all of the universe. And what would our life be like if we did? And a, a different way to ask this question is how might you, how might this be showing up in your life today? How might this be showing up in your life today? And with that, contemplation. Let's think of the affirmation that we had repeated earlier today. I am open to possibilities beyond the limitlessness of the universe. It's about being open at the top, being divine distributors of energy and not the generators. I am open to possibilities beyond the limitlessness of the universe.
And with that, I'll ask you to join me in a prayer. Close our eyes and take a breath and breathe in that aspect of the original artist that resides within yourself, your whole full self, whole self. Know that each of these properties of spirit are present here and now. They are present in the asteroids in the sky. They're present on Mars where we just landed. They're present in the, the wind and the snow and the, the elements that are outside in different states across our country, across the world. They're present here in my home, in my dog Chewbacca, who lays her sleeping, in each and every one of us and in me. These properties of beauty, of light, of life, of love, of peace, of joy, of power. They are in every cell of each of our bodies. And that is an amazing truth. And I realized that each of us, as each of us own these truths, as each of us opens to being divine distributors of this energy and allowing this flow of God to flow through us, our lives are the most perfect and beautiful creations as artists. We live our life with ease in the flow, masterfully creating each moment of every day. What a wonderful, peaceful, beautiful way to express love and to express beauty in our lives and to see it all around us. Knowing that this externalization of harmony is our natural way of being. And that we might find it hard to describe, but we know it when we see it. We know it when we feel it. It is innate in us. I give thanks to know these truths. I give thanks for the words of Thomas Trowers, for the teaching of all of our founders and um, teachers throughout the time to be here and bless each of us right now to embody and live our lives to the fullest. And I release this word to the law, knowing without a shadow of a doubt that as these words are spoken, the truth is done and said. And if you will join me in saying, and so it is. We are one in the spirit. 
every woman, every man, every boy and girl. We are one in the spirit. We are one in this world. We are one in the spirit. Everybody, every soul, everywhere we church. Thank you, dear Kelly, for sharing your wisdom and your joy and most of all your love. And thank you, Jim, for being who you are, uh, such a bright, beautiful practitioner in our sweet village here. And uh, Robert, the musician, always wonderful to have you here. And now is the time for us to take a moment and celebrate the gifts that we are all giving, the ties. I used to, I used to, when I first started in the ministry, I used to just hate this part because I had to ask people for money. And I love it now because I get to ask people for money because it's all about serving our community. And as we give from a joyful knowing that we are each individualized expressions of the lavishly abundant universe, why would we struggle financially? We know this. We know that we are each meant to be lavishly abundant. So as we give our gifts to continue our contribution as a community that uplifts the consciousness of humanity, we can give joyfully. So if you'd like, take your energy or your check, put it to your heart. There are many ways to give. You can give through PayPal texting um tiderly it's brand new i didn't know that was i mean that's not brand new my knowledge of that is brand new so there are many ways to give please repeat with me this perfect gift is spirit in form circulating and blessing all that it touches freely i give and joyously i receive and so it is thank you so much for giving so right after the service, we are going to be offering a new member orientation meeting. And we'll just go over the science of mind philosophy and what it means to be a, um, a member here at the church, at our community, and uh, how we can find out how we can love and support you. This is one of my favorite events of being a, a senior minister is welcoming new people. Next Sunday, we will be welcoming. We will be having a new member Sunday. We hope that you come and celebrate our new members. And then at 11 next Sunday, the 7th of March, we will be having a party. We're going to party. And um, we can do that online. I've been doing it online for a year now. And uh, we're going to ask you to come. This week, you will be receiving a gift we ask that you don't open it until you come to our party, unless you can't come to our party and then you can open it. Um, so many people have given their time and talent to make our party be really fun and celebrating our new online ministry and also starting our capital campaign. So I look forward to seeing you at all these events. Be sure and check out our newsletter. We have different events going on during the week and we are here to love and support you. And every week, practitioners are ready to pray with you. Our telephone numbers, our emails, our information to get in contact with us are located on the website. Please visit the website to find out exactly how to get a hold of us and give us a call. We can help with any kind of issues you might have, and we can celebrate whatever might be going on that's great in your life. So appreciate each one of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining our service today. We hope you enjoyed it, and we hope that you feel inspired. Remember, the quote for the week from Agmandino is, do all things with love. I want to thank Robert and Jim and Kelly for doing all things with love. That was very obvious that you did that. 
So we here at the Center for Spiritual Living have what's called a BHAG. A BHAG is a big, hairy, audacious goal. And our goal is to reflect the divine through teaching the science of mind principles as we co-create an inclusive, inspiring, global online ministry. We give so much thanks that you are a part of this. Have a great week, everyone. Wear your masks. Do everything you can to stay safe and know how loved you are. Thanks for joining us. Have a great week. Love you dearly. Please join me now for our benediction. I now walk so that whoever walks beside me dwells in the presence of God. I now listen so that whoever speaks with me knows that I hear the voice of God. Whoever places a hand in mine is limited, and whoever thinks of me is illuminating the God consciousness. For spirit and I are one eternally, and so it is. Yeah, yeah, well, I am a light, I am a light in this world, in this world, I am a light, I am a light in this world, in this world, this is the place, this is the time, let it shine. I feel the joy, I feel the joy in this world, in this world. I feel the joy, I feel the joy in this world. Right place, right place, a right time, right time. We're gonna let it shine, let it shine. Talking love every day, spreading peace along the way, peace along the way, and I feel joy every day, I'm feeling peace along the way, gonna let that light shine, I am the light, I am the light, I'm the light, gonna shine how about you i am the light we are the light we're gonna let that light of our shine because it's the right place it's the right time gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it Original music written and performed by Karen Karsh. Copyright held by Karen Karsh Crystal Music. All rights reserved. Love lives here!